At 6 a.m. Friday, December 10th, 1982, John Sperling and Roland Gooch woke to the sound of an explosion. When they went to investigate, they found their neighbor's 1982 Saab 900 engulfed in flames. Sperling, who happened to be a retired fire chief, had told 48 Hours in 2001, quote, As I approached the flames, I could see that I had a car in the ditch. I could see that I had a victim in the driver's seat and also that this victim was beyond anything that I could do for them, unquote. So while he was fur further investigating the Saab 900, Sperling and Gooch, they realized that the car was that of their neighbors and inside were the shard charred remains of 40-year-old Janet Dow and her 18-year-old son, Stephen. Now, the car, it was only 500 feet away from the Dow residence in Thorn Thornton, New Hampshire. Sperling and Gooch, they noticed that the lights were on in the Dow home, yet no one had from the Dow residence had come out. Inside was Richard Eugene Dow, a retired state trooper for New Hampshire, and Richard went by Dick, by, for, according to his friends. In 1973, Janet Dow happened to divorce Stephen's father, Manuel Wally Medeiros, and Within that year of 1973, probably about 1974, Janet had married Dick, and Dick eventually later on adopted Stephen. Stephen was nine years old when the divorce and new marriage took place. Janet, she happened to be kind of this, a staple in Thornton. She w worked for the government as a postal worker, Stephen, he was in his senior year of high school. He had a love for sports, but his real passion was cars, and especially his own car that he cher cherished. And Stephen also made time for his girlfriend, Kelly Sutherland. Kelly said that he was a very lovable and compassionate person. He got along with pretty much anyone, except for he had a tumultuous relationship with Dick. It probably had a lot to do with the fact that Stephen was nine when Janet divorced his biological father and remarried Dick. Now, this happens to be in New Hampshire and it is December. So on the 11th of December, 1982, the Valley News in Lebanon, New Hampshire, they had ran a report about several individuals being killed in car accidents during the same time period. And with it being frigid cold snaps and leads to freezing roads and slippery dustings of snow cover, slicked ice were probably also... Um, blown over snow that they were trying to say that the possibility that the car that Janet and Steven were in were probably due to the conditions and it wasn't outside the realm of possibilities that it just happened to be a tragic car accident. Now, the neighbors did take notes of how the road looked, and especially uh, John Sperling, having been a firefighter in the past and having his knowledge of it, he noted that the road didn't show any signs of a skid mark or that Janet had lost control and was trying to overcorrect. 
He also noticed that the damage to the front end of the car wasn't really that severe, even though the crash had seemed to be powerful enough to set the car ablaze. Now, about 11 years later, in 2001, that's more than 11 years. Okay, um, all right, um, I told Quentin he didn't really have to edit this, so I am, apologize, I'm still not feeling the greatest, and my notes are kind of all over the place, uh, it would be Karen Safian, who happened to be dating Dick after Janet and Steven had passed, and approximately four and a half to five years into their relationship, Dick came out of pretty much nowhere and looked at Karen and was like, oh, you, you know what happened to them, right? And she was just kind of baffled, and he claimed to have gone down to the basement of his house to put coal in the furnace and he said that well he he said that while he was down there that he heard a pop sound and he knew it was shot gunshots and he so he grabbed the axe and went upstairs and went into the bedroom now there are a lot of sources, actually most sources, say that Janet and Stephen were arguing over whether Stephen could go to school that day or if he was able to work on his vehicle. Um, and Dick basically said that he heard the, the gunshots and came upstairs to see that Stephen had shot Janet, so he had to kill Steve with an axe and then he admitted the fire was the fire was no accident that he purposely put them both in the car then he rolled the hill rolled the car down the hill and he went back into the house just to wait for the police to show up Now, the, after this, there was a reenactment done to try and see how really accurate Dick Dow's um, events were. Now, in 2001, the, there was a reenact, they recreated the accident in the fire and the team they had found a 1982 Saab and just just like the one that the Dows had owned when they rolled the car into the ditch at the speed that was calculated that it had to be traveling during the accident nothing happened it what the gasoline that was in the back seat which I failed their bring up so <coughs> excuse me Dick Dow had said that Steven was working on the carburetor for his car and he had put it in a bucket of gasoline in the back seat and that the gasoline must have started the car on fire when it went into the ditch well when they did the reenactment they said that the only way they were able to get the car to actually start on fire is they had to ignite a rag and throw it inside the vehicle and then crack the window so there was an air feed to feed the fire. So the investigators in 2001, they actually believed that the car was started on fire outside of the car 
and that it was such a low speed that there was no way that Dick Dow's regular regular recollection of what he assumed happened. Pearl saying hi. Hi Pearl. Hi Pearl. Oh, the recollection is that they uh, lost Jenna off control as she was arguing with Steven and that when she must have slammed on the brakes or something like that, that the gas, the carburetor and the bricks and the gas came flying forward and knocked both of them out. Well, the in reenactment investigators basically said at such a low speed, it was almost impossible for them to be knocked out like that. I apologize for the dog. And the, the original officers, they had reported that the car had veered off the road into the ditch and that it the impact sent cement blocks flying forward that knocked the two of them out and then they said that the gasoline ignited causing the fatal fire so something had to have started it, there had to be an ignition or something had to ignite it so I don't know um and they never did find this carburetor that was allegedly in the back seat of the car and that is the case of Janet and Stephen Dow now did the retired state trooper murder his wife and adopted son as a cop or, or something? Or did his cop buddies just look the other way until next and now until next time, stay safe but stay curious.